implement the operational efficiency strategy, one of the top 20 business building supersizing strategies to supersize and grow your business fast, right? This is, I keep saying I like these different strategies, obviously, because I came up with the list of my top 20 favorite ones. But this one is probably my all time favorite. Why? Because it only depends on you and your organization and making your business better. And when we focus on things that we can control, which this is something that's 100% within our control, that gives us more power in the marketplace, more power with our customers, more power to create and build and grow and supersize our business in whatever ways we want to. So what four steps do we need to undertake to implement and put this strategy to work in our business today? If you're not using it already, I, I know there's a lot of businesses that are running and being really, really successful, but they don't have documented processes. They don't have systems documented. They don't have a continuous improvement process in place or a uh, system in place to automatically update and approve and review their documents and their operational procedures and how they do things. So let's get this nailed down for you and your business now. Let's do it at the beginning of this year if you haven't done it yet. What are the four steps to that? Number one, process evaluation. You have to know what your processes are and believe it or not, you want them documented and written down. Why? Because people come and go in our organizations and we don't want all of the knowledge and all the wisdom of any of our processes and any of our uh, ways of doing things to disappear or leave our organization without, uh, just because people move on or go to different businesses or start their own businesses, right? So process evaluation and analysis. We wanna analyze our current workflows document our processes, and then identify any place that there's a bottleneck or an inefficiency. And guess what? As business owners and CEOs or whatever we call ourselves these days, guess how often we find ourselves being the bottleneck in our own business or causing inefficiencies because we are slowing down processes, primarily because nobody else owns them or has documented them. So first step, evaluate your processes, know how you do things, and it takes a little time up front but once you document them, it's just a matter of reviewing and updating. So the hardest part is actually just doing it the first time. And we're already doing it, so why not just write down what we're doing? Secret for making that quick and easy is have the person that actually does the job document their own processes and then streamline and review them after that. Step two, streamline those processes, right? We wanna look at those processes uh, and find ways to make improvements. We can use automations, we can use technology, we can, uh, find anything that we repeat over and over and over again ought to be automated in some way, shape or form. Why? Because that takes the chance of error and quality defects out of that process. Step three, after we either streamlined or used technology or automations to streamline our processes, we got to train people on them, right? Part of why we want to document the processes and improve the processes and train everyone on the processes is so that we get consistent results and predictable, repeatable results, right? So we train everybody and we also, in addition to training them, want to empower them to look for ways to improve what it is they do and how they do it. Why? Because it's everybody's job in the organization to continually improve and make the operations and make everything about the business better. And then finally, step four is to have regular assessments. I have, in every company I've ever owned, set a minimum annual review of our processes and our procedures and our systems. Now it helps that I came from manufacturing and I grew up as an engineer, or I grew up to be an engineer, and processes and systems and documentation are just kind of inherent in my being because I know how powerful they are in helping us to run our businesses more efficiently. Uh, so regular assessment, minimum, annual, but what I like to do is anytime there's a change in my organization, the person that owns that process or runs that process or performs that duty or task is tasked with updating the process and reviewing the process. So if we get a new raw material, the person that handles purchasing and raw materials, those people get together and they say, okay, let's review our process and make sure it applies to this new raw material or that because that's a change. So we'd review the processes that have to do with incoming materials, things like that. So we build it into our daily operating procedures and how we do business every day to make it simple and easy. And before you know it, we're automatically clicking like a well-oiled machine and making improvements on a daily basis, not just on an annual basis or whenever there's a big change in our organization. Love to know your experience with this particular 
uh, strategy for building and growing and supersizing your business? Are you a believer in processes and process improvement and continual improvement? Do you have your processes documented? Be honest, write it down. You might have some areas of your business documented, but other areas not at all. Guess what? Sales, marketing, those type departments seem to be the hardest and the most resistant to documenting their processes because they think there's some big secret there, which guess what? There isn't. There's no real secrets. It's all about figuring out what works for you and then applying it and doing it over and over and over again. Have an awesome day. And I will, of course, be with you tomorrow with number nine of our top 20 supersizing your business strategies. Any questions, hit me up. Otherwise, have an awesome day. Go document some processes.